Landry. Last time on Illuminations, we witnessed the power of trusting in God and how investing in God's work keeps our focus on Him and gives us confidence that He will always take care of us. In this episode, we'll meet Walid Shabbat, a former Palestinian terrorist who reconciled with his enemies as he becomes a follower of Christ. So come along with me back to the land of Israel and enjoy our next Illumination. Shalom, we are here in the Mount of Olives, here in one of the most holy places in the holy city of Jerusalem. You know, the Apostle Paul teaches us in Romans chapter 11, he teaches us about this olive tree. There's ancient olive trees that are here. I could go down to where there's young olive trees, get a wild, wild olive branch, and literally cut it on a 45 degree angle. I could take it and put it in our van drive it up here into this ancient garden. Go to one of these trees that you see behind me. Go into the root where there's little, they call them like saplings or suckers that come up out of the root. Take a wild olive branch and literally take it to the sapling or the sucker of the old root of the tree that is 2000 years old. And by nature, the ancient root, starts pumping sap in the spring. Isn't it amazing that we can take this branch and graft it into this ancient root. And in one season, the sap from the lump finds its way up this new branch. And this young branch that was in prison to be in the desert, to have very little oil, now all of a sudden, the DNA in this branch has changed the ancient kingly anointing of yesterday, the ancient anointing of 2000 years, the integrity of the patriarchs is pumping in its veins. It is bringing forth an anointing that represents the lump of which it wasn't naturally birthed in, but now it's been grafted in to its destiny. That's what the apostle Paul was teaching us in Romans 11. He said, even if some of the natural branches were cut off so that we might be grafted in, he said, he did this for a fullness. He talks in Romans 11 about how much more the fullness when the Jewish people return back to the tree. That's what's happening right now. We have Jews and Gentiles here in the garden where it all began. We are here for one purpose. We are in the holy city of God and we have been called here because you know what's happening in the earth today? The ancient olive tree of the earth is awakening and springtime has come. We are coming to the end of the age. There's an anointing in the lump. The lump, Paul said, if the lump be holy, so are the branches. God is doing a supernatural thing right now in this garden. You know, one of the powers of the book of Romans, particularly 11, that we were talking about there in the Garden of Gethsemane is the church and non-Jewish people have been grafted into the olive tree of Israel. I want to introduce you to my friend Walid Shabbat, former terrorist, one who was filled with hate and now is filled with the sap of the love of Christ in him. The, the worst moment for my life, when I was a young terrorist, I planted a bomb and it exploded. And when I went home, I had thought that people must have been killed as a result of that explosion. I couldn't sleep day in and day out. I couldn't eat, I couldn't, I was so depressed. It was the, one of some of the mo most depressive part of my life, those three days. But the Almighty uh, was merciful because when I went to plant that bomb and I saw some kids running around about that bank, uh, I decided to toss the explosives on the roof of the bank. And as, as I was walking from downtown Bethlehem, 
and I reached to the uh, Church of the Nativity, I heard the explosion behind me. It exploded five minutes after I tossed it on the roof. And I ran as fast as I could. There was a smoke bellowing out of that, of the building. And uh, when I went home, I thought somebody must have been injured or hurt. But thank God that I, I tossed the thing on the roof the last second. Uh, we look at uh, prejudice and racism. I remember my first experience. I was taking a trip from Bethlehem to Hebron, and I got on the taxi cab. And when we reached to downtown Hebron, an event erupted in which Palestinian demonstrators were stoning a Jewish bus that came to pick up the community of Qiryat Arba. And the taxi cab wanted to make a U-turn because it was a very violent situation. You could barely see this bus. It had wire mesh, bulletproof glass, and bars. It looked like a chicken coop. And the taxi cab wanted to make a U-turn. I said, stop right here. And I rolled down my window and I began to stare at the situation. And then I asked the taxi cab driver, I says, why do we do this? The taxi cab driver was an Arab like me. I said, why do we do this? And he says, well, you know, they're Jews that live in an Arab area. And so they stone them all the time. So I asked the question, I said, why aren't Jews allowed to live amongst us? Why can't we have Jews live amongst us? Why do we have to stone them because they live amongst us? Yet there are many Arabs who live in Israel proper. No one stones them or stones the Arab community's buses. Could it be possible that we are prejudiced, that we are racist? I began to <clears throat> dwell on that incident, which I, which I saw in Hebron, for many years to come, and it affected me. In fact, it affected me in which when I was searching for God, to realize that I have a problem, that we have a problem, that racism is a problem, that it's not about the land issue, it's about Jew hatred. Be not carnally minded, because then you'll be at enmity with God. Our minds are always at enmity with God without the anointing of this garden. You're Jesus, our Messiah. He shed blood from his temple in this garden, and he did it in an olive grove to say there's an anointing that we can anoint the mind, that we can anoint the mind and be transformed into the supernatural. That the reality of being grafted in is not just an allegory, but a literal, a literal fact in our life. I think Romans 11 and Ephesians 2 are some of the most important teachings of the Apostle Paul. These teachings came from places where he was in great distress. He was teaching from a prison. He didn't know how long he was going to have life. See, some of the best teaching and the best revelations come from places of pressure. Paul teaches us in Romans 11 that there's a fullness when we as Jews and Gentiles come together, one in Messiah. He talks about the power of a fullness that comes. That word fullness doesn't mean full number of people, like there's X amount of millions of Gentiles that come in and then all of a sudden he's finished and then God just focuses on the Jewish people. No, that fullness is when we come together in the garden as we are here. We have Scotsmen, we have Germans, we have Jews all believing in one Messiah, one anointing. We are truly grafted in as the one new man. Every time I come to this garden, this is the garden of the wedding feast. This is a garden where he came and he took that cup. In Jewish culture, a young man will go, he'll bring a petition to the father. And the father will look at it and say, this is what I have. This is who I am. This is what I offer. And this is, so to say, what I bring to the table. The Father will read it and he'll pray over it. And after he feels released in prayer, he'll go and get a cup. He puts the petition and he puts the request before her and then he put, puts a cup. She carefully considers because she knows her life is going to shift because of this choice. She doesn't say yes or no to her father, but in our tradition, if it's yes, she takes the cup and she takes one sip from it 
and sets it down right in the center of the petition. And just like that Jewish bride, the father will bring you a petition and say, here's an opportunity to change your life, but you're gonna be the one that has to drink the cup. So many times, just like that Jewish bride, God's not listening and he doesn't want words, he wants action. He just wants to see your right hand, your covenant hand to reach out and grab that cup. Walid is gonna share with us really the painful process of finding his identity in Yeshua as Messiah, in Christ. We all go through this. His is more dramatic than others because here he is battling. Everyone was calling him a Palestinian. He's an Arab. He's not really a Palestinian. And then realistically, after you get grafted in, he becomes a son of Abraham. What a dynamic, what a testimony. Get ready to be changed in the way you think about your identity. Being an Arab living in as a, what the world called us Palestinians, uh, it was very difficult because our minds was inculcated, was always bombarded with special hatreds, the hatred of the West, the hatred of imperialism, the hatred of Zionism, the hatred of all kinds of things. It was the, the party line or the coffin. We were kind of uh, tunnel vision and our minds were set living in this cocoon of this, of this life that we had until I read the Bible, of course. And what the Bible does, it really, it, it, it begins to uh, evolve you and change you, and it's, it's a change of mindset. You know, it, 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 it's a mirror that you begin to see yourself. And when you look at the mirror, sometimes you will find the, the, the zits on your face. If, if you know my expression, you find your own problems, you find your own soul and the decrepitness that you have yourself. So the Bible began to show me that I had a problem, a serious problem, and that is I wasn't follow, following God's will. I began to pray to God to show me his will. And I didn't know what that path will take. But that path, after reading the Bible, took me to utter peace and harmony with my enemies and to love your enemies, uh, do good to those who do evil to you. Uh, it, it gave us the fruit of the spirit. I began to, 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 to see not my roadmap, but God's roadmap. And he has a plan and he executes his plan perfectly. And so uh, my life changed when I began to read the Bible and uh, it took me a year or so, then I became a believer and that's where things changed for me. It really did change. And I made a deal with God. I said, God, you show me the truth and I'll do anything you want. I should have, I should have never said that last part of the phrase when I made the deal with God because <laughs> sometimes I want to go uh, to Tyre and I end up in Nineveh, if you know what I mean. When I asked the Messiah to come into my heart, I was so filled with joy, I couldn't think about my sins. <laughs> it took me a while to begin to kind of realize the things I had to fix. On my first year of marriage with Maria, my wife, we were not getting along. We were fighting like cats and dogs. And I remember the first thing that happened when I went upstairs, uh, I had left my wife upstairs and I was upset till three in the morning. And when I received the Messiah, I was sitting on the couch and I said, okay, Jesus, come in. That's all I remember. And I had this joy. And so I went upstairs and my wife thought it was another fight as usual because it'll be, I was very, you know, violent person. And my wife jacked up from the bed thinking, he, he, there he comes, this violent husband of mine. And I sat next to my wife and I said, honey, uh, I just became a believer in Jesus. And she said, uh, and I said, I love you very much. And she looked at me, she says, okay, I love you too. Why don't you turn off the light and tomorrow you'll be okay. In other words, she thought I was going through some experience of some sort and I, she turned off the light. Then I turned the light back on and she thought I was about to fight with her as usual. I said, you don't understand what happened to me downstairs. I will die with the faith that I received downstairs and I will go tell the world about it. I know you don't believe me right now, but you will see. And I said, now I can turn off the light. I turned off the light and my wife couldn't recognize who I was. It took her a while, you know, 
After a month, she says to me, you are not the husband that I married. What did you do with my husband? I said, I got rid of him for you. I said, do you want the old husband back? She goes, no, I like the new one a lot better. <laughs> We are no longer separated from the commonwealth of Israel. We are no longer separated from that lump, which is holy, that king priest anointing. We are no longer enslaved by false religions, religious doctrine that makes us weak, but the power of God to the excellence of our callings being released in this hour. This literal city of Jerusalem is shaking because that power is coming, preparing this place for the soon return of the king. And Paul teaches us in Romans 11, for if you were cut out of an olive tree, which was wild by nature and were grafted contrary by nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more, how much more will these who are natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? And that's what's happening. That's when you see in the Messianic movement, Jewish people returning to Messiah, being grafted into the ancient olive tree becoming more Jewish with Jesus than they ever were when they were away. Just like you as Gentiles, when you understand the revelation of being grafted in, you become more Jewish with Jesus and you become more like your root. For if the lump be holy, so are the branches. When you separate anything from its root, it always grafts into something that is adulterous. It always grafts into something because when you're not grafted in and you have no sap, you're gonna go find it. And when you don't tap into your father, that's why when Jesus prayed in this very garden, he cried out to his father. He didn't cry out to his mother. He didn't cry out to a brother. He cried out to his father. He said, Father, let the power of the universe come through me to make a choice. The Lord really challenged me while we were in the Garden of Gethsemane with that scripture out of Romans that says that he says, he desires us not to be ignorant of the ways of God. Be not ignorant of this mystery, lest you become wise in your own opinion. You know, in a very simple way, you can see man's opinion of religious things or man's interpretation can cause wars and all sorts of problems. Walid, you'll see here, he's challenged by a family member who are you, Walid, and what God do you worship? It's powerful to see how he answers this family member at this family reunion. Watch this. I remember the day that when I was in a family reunion and my uncle came down from the stairs and he noticed that I'm not the same person that he knew all these years. And he asked me point blank in front of the whole clan, he said, Walid, who is your God? And I began to ask myself, this is not the time for me to answer this question. And I began to talk to God, why here? Why right now? I can tell them on the phone who I believe in, uh, but not here, it is very difficult. And the first thing that came to my ear was, if you deny me, then I will deny you. And I says, oh my gosh, this is my testing. So I says, my God is the Messiah who died for me. And boy, the spitting began. It was not a happy scene, of course. You lose all your family, you know? Your brother is no longer your brother. Your father is no longer your father. Your family really hate you. They want you dead. Uh, but then God gives you a new family. Now I have a huge family. Wherever I go, I got relatives everywhere by the millions. Some of them are pain in the neck and some of them are nice and some of them are sweet, some of them are tough. Some of them are too serious like the rabbi, but they're still family, you know? Family is family is family. We are grafted in, you know, uh, whether it's Ishmaelite or whether it's Mexican or Scottish, it doesn't matter. He's going to unite the wild branch. And we were this wild branch who never knew God, who ne was never linked and hooked and, and, and kind of, you know, uh, fitted into the real root of Israel. And God will bring all these wild branches and begin to take and sap from that same root. And this is why 
you know, the first thing I saw when I saw the New Testament even, I saw the, the Jewish essence of the New Testament and that we are grafted in, uh, you know, and without being grafted into the root, and if the root's not there, what's the use of the branch? It really goes together. And once we understand and link to the dynamo of the Messiah, then everybody uh, gets along and we are all become one. I get along with a Jew, I get along with the Arab, I'll get along with, with any race. And so I believe that when the kingdom comes, God is going to heal the Middle East. I've been in ministry now for 22 years and our ministry, the big thrust is teaching the message of Paul's in Ephesians chapter two, one new man. What one new man means is when Jew and Gentile come together, one in Messiah. It's called reconciliation. You're about to watch literally one of the most powerful reconciliations that we've ever had here at House of David. When Walid Shabbat, former Palestinian terrorist who has an encounter with Yeshua as Messiah sits right here in this sanctuary at House of David. And you're about to witness a history being made between Ishmael and Isaac coming together, openly repenting and receiving forgiveness so that that reconciliation and the power of God might be released. If you need forgiveness and you need reconciliation, don't miss this. I want to, first of all, bless and thank you man to man for the courage and the stamina for you and your wife and your family for standing up for Jesus and standing up for Yeshua as Messiah and standing up for the Jewish people. And I, I, I have to say this, and on behalf of our people who have not understood your platform, who have been critical of you, uh, I ask you to forgive us as the Jewish people. Apostolically, I ask that you forgive us for uh, the words which have power and are like fiery darts. I ask that they be removed out of your, your mind and removed out of your soul. And uh, as you said earlier, we're not becoming brothers, we've always been brothers. And I am honored that I can come together with you as a brother and we can ask forgiveness and the Lord gives it to us. And that literally right now, that this is probably one of the highlights of 22 years of ministry for me as the one new man, Jews and Arabs coming together. But I want to ask you to forgive us as a people group and even us inside the Christian community who have not understood your platform and uh, forgive us for coming against uh, your ministry and your family and your message because the message that you carry and the message that I carry, this is a message that's not from man. We may be just men speaking it, but this message is from God. You and I speak the message that God gave to the Apostle Paul in a prison in Rome, that his blood, his blood came. There's no reason for you to spill your blood, and there's no reason for my people to spill our blood, and there's no reason for our people to spill each other's blood, because the blood of Jesus has already been spilled, and it did it once and for all to reconcile us to God. And uh, I am honored to have you here, and I'm honored to have you as my brother. My honor is mine, my friend. And I ask you to receive this blessing and this forgiveness in Yeshua's name. Well, amen. I think that's what makes the mark of a Jew. He's always asking for forgiveness when the others really need to ask for that forgiveness. It wasn't the Jew that shot my family members I remember my cousin Raid Shu'ibat, who was a young child, you know, 16 years old. He was shot by Jewish, by an Israeli bullet. But it wasn't that Israeli really that shot him. It wasn't you. It was hatred that he learned he became a terrorist. Then he went to try to kill you. 
And in the process, you had to defend yourself. I think reconciliation comes between us is because both of us have an element that did not exist. The element is the element of confession. And confession comes from the Jewish faith. And uh, to understand that to have peace is easy for the Jew. The Jew always wants peace. And the Jews always apologizing for things he didn't even commit. But I think that I will now become the collaborator, if you know what I mean. We still, I still have a mission to win my brothers to the truth. And you have a mission also to win your brothers to the truth. And we both have that same mission. And, you know, since we both have become rejects, and maybe rejects are closer to each other, and so our Messiah takes the rejects. The Jews been the reject of history. And the ones who believe in the Messiah also becomes the reject of history. So since we're both rejects of history, we only have each other and we are family. If we can go join together really in the prayer of, you know, this is an ancient symbol of the early church. It's a fish which represents the believer the menorah, which represents the Jewish people. And when the two become, come together, it creates a third symbol, which is the star of David, which is the house of David. We sit here in my congregation here where I am blessed to be a part of the house of David. And it says out of the house of David in the Bible, many things that are good flow from the house of David. So may this prayer that we join together in our hands. May this prayer flow out of the house of David to the nations of the earth. May this prayer flow to you as we agree. Father, in the name of Yeshua, we come together as one new man. Father God, we thank you that we are the forgiven of the Lord. We thank you that your blood has removed the middle wall of separation. We thank you, Lord, that it has created one new man from the two, and as it says in Ephesians 2.14, thus making peace between us. Thank you, Lord, that you are our peace. Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah, is our Shar Shalom. Amen. Amen. Shalom Malechem, my peace I leave with you. Shalom, shalom from your root shalim. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Are you searching for a deeper and more rich faith? Are you searching to understand more about your spiritual roots? We are so excited to offer you Illuminations. Illuminations is a 12-part cinematic series that was filmed on site in Israel, but outside of that, it also hosts interviews with individual people just like you and I, and we talk to them about their One New Man experience and the spiritual transformation that they have had understanding the Jewish roots of their faith and the power of covenant. I'd like to invite you to order yours today to enrich your faith and your family.